My name is Todd Pittenger. I live in Salina, Kansas. That's my current hometown. It's also my place of birth, Salina, Kansas. I pretty much have worked in radio um, and have worked at the same group of radio stations since 1994 in Salina, so about the last 20 years. We have a group of six radio stations, uh, two in Manhattan, one in Abilene, three in Salina. Salon.com ran an article on Friday by a Penn State professor named Sophia McLennan. Sophia McLennan is distressed that the Colbert Report is coming to an end. She loved the Colbert Report because it skewered conservatives and it finally made America the country it should have been all along. She's celebrating that mocking, making fun of conservatism, is patriotism today. And then she said this, and this is the key right there. Finally, we had someone remind us that you could care about your nation and simultaneously find American exceptionalism disturbing. There you have it. A professorette at Penn State lamenting the loss of a comedy show because a comedy show finally put conservatives and conservatism in its place. By the way, this professorette at Penn State is not alone. I read all this stuff and I'm telling you, it's getting harder and harder to remain in good cheer. KSAL AM is a news talk radio station with a very conservative lean. Uh, that being said, I had a discussion with somebody the other day saying, you know, why are you conservatives? Well, because that's a, we could, it, it pays the bills. People listen to that. I said, if, if people would listen to liberal as opposed to conservative radio, we'd play that too. If that would, We tried a thing where we had some liberal programming on the weekends and it just failed miserably. And we got complaints about it and it just the ratings were not good on it. And basically, we're in conservative middle America, and it's what people like to hear on the radio. So that's why we program KSAL AM. It's news talk. would we'll be as local as we can. I think it's very important to be local. I'm Sophia McLennan. I'm the Associate Director of Penn State School of International Affairs and the Director of the Center for Global Studies at Penn State. I have been working at Penn State for 14 years, and so I came to Central Pennsylvania 14 years ago. Before that, I was an assistant professor at Illinois State University. I went to undergraduate at Harvard and studied philosophy, and I have my PhD from Duke University. And um, I've sort of constantly been working on the intersections between culture, politics, and society, and so I have a range of research across a bunch of different fields, including human rights and satire. When I started with the stations, it already was news talk, uh, Rush Limbaugh, the, the big shows were already on the air. And again, it, it's just the landscape here. It's what's been popular. Um, the, it, it does well in the ratings. And I've had the discussion with my boss before, um, and he has said the same thing. You know what, if something else would get better ratings for us, we'd carry that also. It's not that we absolutely, positively all are, are conservatives here at the radio station. I, if you would go poll everybody individually, I bet we would run the full gamut of the political spectrum at the radio station of those who work behind the scenes at the station. But basically, uh, it, it, it's popular here. People like to listen to it, and uh, people will advertise on it here in Middle America on a conservative radio station. What do you think of Rush Limbaugh? What do I personally think of Rush? To be honest, I, I don't even listen to him that much. When I'm working, I work back at my desk. I have the radio station turned on in, in the background just in case we go off the air or anything. So I always have it turned on in the background while I'm working. I think he's an entertainer. Uh, well, I think that the argument that conservative talk radio is just about entertainment is a convenient way to try to back out of taking responsibility for misinforming the public, teaching them to be afraid of things that are not legitimate fears, and for effectively you know, dividing the nation in ways that may be irreparable. I don't think it's something to be taken lightly. The, rise of the Rush Limbaugh type of radio was facilitated, right, in 1996, I think, when there was a technology act that allowed, or the radio act that allows you to go on and on and on and have one political perspective uh, consistently on air without any balance. Once that changes, 
then there's no other side. And it's true. You can see in this piece that it, it gets people to, pick, to tune in. So what are they tuning in for? They're tuning in because the radio shows get them upset. It's sort of like watching a soap opera, but politically devastating. <laughs> so they, they tune in because the shows are like, stay up, be, stay, stay with us, because next we're going to talk about this thing that's going to ruin your life or the next thing that's going to you know, destroy everything that matters to you. And so the shows are consistently driven on fear. And when not fear, anger, right? So even Bill O'Reilly, right? They did a study of Bill O'Reilly's segments and they found that something like 58% were fear driven. And even more importantly, O'Reilly would end his show saying, what can be done about it? Not much. So he would leave his audience stressed out with no sense that there was anything that could be done to make the world better. But more importantly, they consistently get people agitated and freaked out about things that aren't even real things to worry about. Bill loved to get, talk about the war on Christmas, right? So the other thing that they do is they create these false fights. They construct a situation where we have a social conflict in their opinion that isn't, doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. There's no war on Christmas. That's the most absurd thing I've ever heard. Starbucks wants to make their cup green or, I don't know, not put happy holidays, Merry Christmas on it. And that's a story for them. So, so what happens is they get people agitated and freaked out that something very deeply important to them is being taken away. And sure, it gets good ratings. Of course it gets good ratings because it also creates a viewer base that's about loyalty. Not about, I'm tuning into NPR because I'm just interested in seeing what's happening in the world, right? Instead, you're tuning in because your father, Rush, right? These are authoritative figures. They kind of function. Glenn Beck was like, you know, tried to be kind of like daddy to everybody. Like that sense of their, their, they'll say, I'm looking out for you. I'm going to take care of you. But boy, you need to worry because all these other people are trying to ruin everything that matters to you. And that structure is a simplistic structure. And you can make money off of it, but there are social consequences, and that's where we're living now. Stuff, pure anything you got. Uh, it's uh, good for snake bites. Uh, it's only a, a stuff will cure. Just about anything you have. You know, you're losing your hair. You know, maybe your hair ain't falling out. Maybe it's falling in, clogging your brain. Good stuff for that. As it says, it's good for anything that ails, you know, as my friend can attest to. It's the only elixir I know of that can cure any malady of the internal organs and also cure athlete's foot from the inside out. <laughs> now, you may ask uh, the, the biggest issue is that if you try to have a rational conversation with someone who watches those shows is that their information base is so fundamentally out of sync with reality. So you really can't even have a reasonable debate about anything because they don't have any facts that are important, right? Fox News is only accurate 17% of the time. 17%. They did a study that showed that if you watched no news of any kind, you scored higher on knowledge of current events than people who watch Fox News. So. If that's what's happening, people are getting so radically misinformed, so emotionally stunted based on this constant barrage of fear and anger. Well, how are we ever going to make our democracy better? I mean, and, and arguably we need regulations. You cannot have these guys just going on the air with no consequence and with no other views that are being presented, right? So the sense of balance is gone. A country so damn great even her haters won't leave. Don't defund the police. A country so damn great even her haters won't leave. Don't defund the police. A country so damn great even her haters won't leave. Don't defund the police. A country so damn great even her haters won't leave. You know, and we were talking about London, right? In England, 
Uh, they couldn't even air the John Oliver segment on Brexit before the Brexit be vote because it was considered too partisan. And I was in Kazakhstan before they had an election. And three days before the election, the news media can't report on the election at all. They call it the period of reflection. <laughs> it's like, and that's Kazakhstan, which we don't really think of as an exemplary democratic situation, right? So we have so many ways that we've allowed our news media or what talk radio, right? Which functions as news media. That's the important thing for many people. Uh, just kind of run unchecked, no consequences. So please, whenever you hear anybody on television or any of the political leaders telling you, we've got to cut this. We can't do this for our kids. We can't do that for the elderly. We don't have the money. Tell them they are not telling the truth. And what is the, what is the uh, left version of conservative radio? Is there any left radio that people are listening to? Well, they listen to Tom Hartman. That would be a good one. Uh, I think the difference is that, well, First of all, I'll say that I'm not sure that the difference is as stark as it could be because it seems to be getting worse and worse, right? Um, we were talking earlier about the Clinton campaign and the sort of shaming and the emotional. There, there were so the, the arguments about Bernie bros. There was a lot of stuff that happened on the left to the left, which was pretty disappointing. But as a general rule, right, left radio is what? Science Fridays on NPR? <laughs> I'm like, what is that? So the, the difference is that I like Science Friday, but why? Because I, it's not personality driven in the same way. Right? He's not trying to be my daddy. <laughs> He's just doing a radio show that's making me smarter while I'm driving to pick up my kids from soccer. I mean, it's a different relationship to the media. And I don't want the left to become like the right. But it, it, won't, it can't compete the same way. So once, one of the things that's fascinating is that in a recent study done by Gallup, in a recent Gallup poll on trust in the media, right? First of all, the U.S. public has the lowest trust in the media it's ever had. But what's interesting is that on the right, the, dis the distrust of the media is far higher. And on the right, they tend to consume one to two sources. And they distrust 24 out of 36 mainstream news sources. And almost everything about that is inverted on the left. The left trusts more sources. The left consumes more sources. So we're talking about d deeply partisan-driven media consumption patterns. And I don't know how to fix that easily. Because again, when the radio feels like a soap opera, you can't turn that off, right? And so how do you help people who've gotten into those habits to change them, right? Just like, and again, when the ratings pay, when it pays off, that's why I work on satire, because satire is the only, it only seems, it seems to be the only foil for it, right? So Colbert can get three million viewers to watch him do something, right? So he's going to be entertaining and he's educating his audience. He's teaching them to think about things critically. It's fascinating to see how it turns out that it's satire that's the foil for these sort of pundit, conservative pundit personalities. I get a whole lot of misogynistic trolls write to me, really mean stuff. So a lot of gender attacks, um, and the troll land. Again, that goes back to what we were just talking about before, which is Rush Limbaugh. Things and entertainment. Social consequences. Politically devastating. 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 Social consequences. Politically devastating. Politically devastating. Politically devastating. Politically devastating. Politically devastating. Politically.